What's up guys, TechLab here. Now, for those of you that don't know, AMD recently released the 8000 series APUs, which are supposedly boasted as being the entry-level graphics cards replacements. Well, of course, we got hold of one and we had to see if that's true. Now, for those of you that watch the channel regularly, you'll know that I have a little bit of a love for the APU. I actually think they're fantastic, that you can build a tiny little system and actually game on it. And AMD have always been the kings of this. For as long as we can remember, all of the APUs that AMD have released have been fantastic and there has been no competition, but they've always kind of lacked a little bit when it comes to playing the latest games. But all of that is supposed to have changed with their latest offering. Their newest lineup of APUs are supposed to be the ones that replace the entry level graphics cards. And of course we had to test that theory out. So I actually went and got one. They do actually provide four different types. The first one being the 8300G. Now that is supposedly just reserved for pre builds so not many people will actually see one but I'm sure if we do manage to get our hands on one we will definitely check it out on the channel then they have the 8500G the 8600G and then it goes up to the Ryzen 7 8700G and of course they get faster the higher you go up but the one that we actually managed to get hold of sits kind of right in the middle this is the AMD Ryzen 5 8600G the reason that I chose this one is because it just kind of slapped straight down there in the middle and it only cost around 200 pounds that is the same price as a 7600X processor so for anybody that's looking out there at the moment and wondering which one to get hopefully this video will actually help you decide. Now most people in a gaming system will actually use a graphics card but for those of you that don't want to do that maybe you want to build a tiny little system this could be an offering that you would be looking at nowadays and as a summary of the specifications of this the H600G sits on the AM5 platform it has six cores and 12 threads it has a base clock speed of 4.3 gigahertz, a boost clock speed of 5 gigahertz, and then we obviously come to the most important thing, which is really going to differentiate this CPU to others. We've got the built in graphics. For the graphics processor, we have the Radeon 7600M. That is going to make all the difference here in comparison to the previous generations, which has eight graphics cores and a graphics clock of 2800 megahertz. Now, of course, compared to a discrete graphics card, it doesn't actually sound that impressive, but when it's all contained inside the one chip, you could actually get some pretty decent performance out of this. But can it actually replace the entry level graphics cards completely? Well, to find that out, we had to do some benchmarking and we decided to put our test in against some reasonably new games, some that are slightly older, and we tested it against a 1080p high setting. Many people would say that that should be the standard for even entry level gaming nowadays. So let's take a look at those benchmarks and see how well it did.
So as you can see from those benchmarks, it didn't quite hit the mark there in 1080p with the high preset, although we did have one game that managed to achieve that, and that game was, of course, Doom Eternal. Now, Doom Eternal does work generally well on most hardware, but if you actually compare it to previous APUs, even in the Ryzen generation, like on the 5000 series, it actually performed exceptionally well. We managed to get above a 60 FPS experience in that game, and it paid absolutely beautiful. But for the others, we didn't quite hit the mark, so we decided to do a little bit more testing to see what would it take to actually get the 60 the FPS experience that we wanted. The first game up is Back for Blood, which actually did well in 1080p with a high preset, and it doesn't take a lot to get it to our 60 FPS. Reducing the quality down to a medium setting and enabling FSR 1 with a balanced setting, the 8600G managed to get an incredible 71 frames per second on average, with a 1% low of 37. This configuration meant that the game still looked very good, and it played quite smoothly with no stuttering at all. The next game that couldn't quite hit that 60fps in 1080p high was God of War, and this took a little bit more to get even close. Keeping the resolution at 1080p and lowering the graphics preset to a low setting and enabling FSR 2 with a balanced setting only allowed us to get an average of 41 frames per second, with a 1% low of just 35. This wasn't all bad though, as it did mean that the game became quite playable, not the 60 FPS we were hoping for, but any lower on the graphics settings and the game would start to look really bad. Hogwarts Legacy was another game that struggled to hit that 60 FPS when in high settings, and like God of War, needed quite a bit of configuration to get running right. In this game, we could get a near 60 FPS experience by keeping the resolution set to 1080p, lowering the graphics preset to a low, and enabling FSR 2 with a balanced setting. With this, we managed to get an average of 57 frames per second on average, with a 1% low of 39. Luckily, even with these settings, this game still looked great, and there were very little issues with performance, just proving you could play this game without a graphics card with the Ryzen 5, 8600G. Spider-Man Remastered was one of the games that surprised me the most as I was expecting it to perform much better than it did. In 1080p with a high preset it was far from a 60fps experience and took a bit of adjusting to get anywhere close. We didn't quite get there but by lowering the graphics preset to a medium while enabling FSR 2.1 with a quality setting we did manage to get an average of 55 frames per second with a 1% low of 41. This meant that the game played extremely well, very smooth, and it still looked fantastic as well. Starfield, as usual, played very badly in pretty much any setting. In 1080p with a high preset, the game was completely unplayable, and to even get it anywhere smooth, we really had to destroy its visuals. Lowering the resolution to 720p and graphics preset to low while also enabling FSR meant that we could only just scrape around 36 frames per second on average with a 1% low of just 25. Now this did mean we could actually play the game, but it felt very bad and it looked like garbage, so avoid this one if you can. The last game in our testing was of course The Last of Us Part 1, a game that for so long ran badly on pretty much anything, but not anymore. In 1080p with a high preset, the game was quite unplayable, but setting the game's graphics preset to low and enabling FSR 2 with a performance setting, everything changed. Now getting an average of 40 frames per second and a 1% low of 31, the game was more than playable, and even with that low setting, it actually still looked great. Now again, even tweaking the settings there, we still didn't manage to get a full 60fps experience out of this APU, but that doesn't mean that it's actually a complete failure. The performance that we did get out of the games was absolutely phenomenal for something that didn't actually have a discrete graphics card. Even some discrete graphics cards would have struggled on them games, particularly even the modern ones. Entry level graphics cards nowadays, you do seem to need to tweak settings, particularly for brand new games. And that's exactly what you have to do to this to get a nice playable experience. But we did manage to get most of those games, apart from Starfield, running perfectly well and you could actually complete them all the way through. Another game that was actually really good on this APU which we didn't include in our testing but we did give it a go was of course Stray. Stray is one of those games that kind of runs a little bit weird on most hardware. You get a lot of stuttering on that and it's generally the way that the game is developed but we didn't see any of that on the 8600G. It actually played the game absolutely beautifully smooth getting over 40 frames per second in a 1080p with a medium preset. That meant that the game was more than playable, and without those extra stutters, which much hardware tends to get, it made the experience perfectly fine. Now, have AMD actually done it? Have they replaced the entry-level graphics cards with these APUs? Well, in my opinion, I don't think they quite have yet. I think you can still get a little bit more performance out of an entry-level graphics card, but for the price of these, they're actually onto a bit of a winner. They are getting very close now because for £200 here, you can get, obviously, your CPU for you and your graphics card all in one and you can perfectly game fine for anybody that has actually got a system where they can't afford a graphics card at the moment and they want to move on to the am5 platform and they want to save a little bit for later for a graphics card this is going to be perfectly fine for you or if you're somebody that does have a graphics card that fails 
while you are actually waiting for the new graphics cards to come along you can still game on this perfectly fine i think that amd have done a fantastic job of this i cannot wait to see the next generation because if they've gone this far between 5000 series and 8000 series the next one's going to be phenomenal and i really think that we are on to a win there when it comes to replacing those entry-level graphics cards let me know in the comments what you think about the performance of this apu have amd done enough in your opinion or do they need to do a little bit more work don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we are going to be doing a lot more content on this one we're going to be doing some comparisons between the cpu versions and the apu versions we're going to be testing more games on it to see what we can actually get it to do and where it actually is perfect for maybe older games are now going to run beautiful and for anybody that wants to build a console sized pc maybe these are the real perfect options for you and i'm sure as always i'll catch you guys in the next one <laughs>